Hey guys, welcome back to part two of our special two-part humanized episode with my best friend, Antonio Thompson. Uh, we just wrapped up an episode all about childhood trauma. Childhood trauma. And we kind of very quickly, because that's the kind of topic that we we're going to have to expound on a lot deeper when you come back. But we quickly went over all the ways that what happened to us in our childhoods, both good and bad, had a really, really big impact on who we are now as adults. Now, one of the things that you and I both have a reputation for is being extremely private. Um, even though mm -hmm. I might seem like an open book at first blush or on social media, in real life, that could not be any further from the case. Mm -hmm. And you're very much the same way. And even though this is a different topic, I actually think it's kind of related to the last topic because I wonder how much our childhoods impacted this, right? So our essential question for this episode mm -hmm. is, it's called Invasion of Privacy. Are you discreet or just plain sneaky? Interesting. Because there have been times in the past that I've realized where I thought I was being discreet or private and someone else perceived it as me being sneaky. Um, I think a couple of years ago I made uh, friends with like this whole new group of girls. I had never met any of them before except for like one person. And we all became friends mm -hmm. and like six months into our friendships, one of the girls who was always sharing all her business confronted me in a message because she was like, I feel like you know so much about me, but I don't know anything about you. Why are you being so secretive? This is not a fair friendship. Sounds personal. Yeah, and I was just like, I'm I'm very present when you and I talk. I'm very excited when you tell me things about your kids and stuff. Uh -huh. Like, why do I need to tell you like things that I think are way too much information right. for us to be friends? But her thing was, I chose to tell you so much and you chose to tell, not tell me anything. Okay. And she started acting as if, I wasn't being private, but I was being sneaky. And I was like, really? So she made me feel bad. And so I was like, maybe something's wrong with me. Maybe it's a fear of intimacy. Maybe I need to, I don't know, open up more. So I decided to tell her about someone and a situation that had been happening with someone. And sure enough, within weeks of me telling her and everybody else in the group my business, the friendship completely fell to pieces because they judged the heck out of me. Mm -hmm. They now had information for gossip. Right. There was lots of speculations. There was rumors. Right. People jumped to conclusions that were wild, but because of the story they had made up in their head, based on a little bit of information I gave them, it right. suddenly now made sense. <laughs> right. And I was like, you guys, wow. And like stunning, stunning clarity. And very quickly, mind you, yeah. you guys showed me all the reasons why I don't tell you my business. Like they, they like feasted on gossip about my business. And I was like, the first six months of our friendship where y'all barely knew anything about me except for things that you needed to know were the best six months of this friendship. Now that y'all know my business and y'all don't know how to act around it, I actually don't want to be your friend anymore. So, Damn. Yeah, and that, that's happened to me a lot where I've been with a group of people where I shared what I thought was appropriate and then I was shamed for not being more of an open book and then the minute I opened up, I regretted it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I've, I've always regretted sharing things that my gut told me not to share. Mm -hmm. I've never regretted keeping my business to myself. Big facts. Never. Right. Um, and so, but we live in a very social media world right now, right? Yes. And so I guess my first question to you, why do you think you're so private? I know I'm private because people can't handle my business without acting like monkeys, right? Mm -hmm. But like, why do you think you're so private? I think, who cares? That's what I no, but you know what I'm I saying. Think I'm I don't no. Care about no, 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 no. But like, who, you know, who cares really to know more about whatever? So I feel like when I see things, people sharing on social media, people sometimes oversharing a lot. Uh, oversharing a lot, yes. It, it's like okay, but do people really? Now, who really cares about this? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no. <laughs> But, I, but I'm saying, said, if you're out here in these streets no. <laughs> sharing what you eat for every meal and all your workouts, but, does not care. But the reality, it, it, but, the, but, the, but the reality is the world, the world is a very judgmental place. It's a very harsh yeah. place. And so why not preserve the things that are sacred for yourself? Right. Why, why release the things that are sacred to the wolves? You know what I'm and saying? And that's always been one of our models in our friendship is keep sacred things sacred. We say that all the time. Um, Two things that, that set us both off are um, hints. We hate hints. I actually mentioned that in the last episode that we had with Obi about how unless you say, uh, Blue, I like you, I'm, I'm never going to assume you like me unless it comes out your mouth. Unless you say, Antonio, mm -hmm. I like you. And we both have a lot of mishaps. We have stories about when people had crushes on us or feelings for us. And we're just like, yo, that went right over my head. I just thought you were really friendly. 
<laughs> but it's also part of being super <laughs> private though, right? When you're constantly minding your business and you're not paying attention to the other people's business as much as they think you are, when they drop hints, you have no idea what they're talking about right. because you were minding <laughs> Right. Is that why we suck at hints? I like to mind my business. Me, I really, I have I so think, much fun business to mind. <laughs> and I think that if we all just minded our business, the world would be an amazing, so your wonderful, reason for being so incredible place. Is, is, your, your reason for being so private and yeah, secretive with your, with, your, with your stuff is that... I don't even think I'm secretive, though. Well, there was a whole debate that I had with a friend recently about what's the difference between private and secret. Mm -hmm. and discreet so there's this like debate that i had with a friend recently about the difference between being private and being secretive um and then what i realized what she, we were actually debating about was the difference between being private and being sneaky okay people tend to think that when you're private you must have something to hide right and i think that's why when you're not open with your business, just because I don't want you to know, doesn't mean I'm ashamed of it. Right. It just means it's none of your, your business. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Do you think that being secretive is a bad thing? No, I think it has a bad connotation. It does. I don't, I don't think it's a bad thing. Because to me, private and secretive, even though they almost mean the same thing, um, and they arguably are synonyms, when you say private, people react very differently from when you say secretive. It's like keeping a secret. But is it really a secret if it wasn't yours, though? Right. Like, if you didn't need to know who I was sleeping with, Am I really keeping it a secret or right. am I just being private about who's in my bed? Right, right, um, right. Do you think being secretive is a bad thing? We have to talk about the definition of secretive, right. right? Because it has a bad connotation, but I don't think there's anything wrong with keeping your business to yourself. I don't think so either. I think it's a little bit weird though, where there are moments where, well, let's be honest. Do you think secrets of omission, like, uh, let's say you and I talk every single day and we're constantly talking and I tell you about my day so you feel like you know what my day is like. And then you find out in the midst of that, I got a job that I didn't tell you about. Right. <laughs> would you think, I'm, not, I'm minding my business. Do you think at that point, would you be like, well, what the hell? Like, why would you not mention every day that we're talking that you just got a new job? Would that be that live omission? Would that, would that make you go, roll? Ro yeah. Ex right, right? But then but why wouldn't you mention that though? But that's what people who have a problem with us say to us. No, 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 no. But I'm saying, no, 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 no. Why would you about tell it. me who you're sleeping why, with? I'm but, your friend. But, it's the same argument. But a job, your livelihood. Who you're sleeping you're with? Making... <laughs> <laughs> so we've determined yeah, but... is Antonio thinks that who his job is more important than who. <laughs> as far as being secret, I mean, it's arguable. No, but like it's the same argument though. I think if we are used to talking about, yes. like, we, we talk a lot about the things that we're doing. Right. And if in the middle of your life you get a job, an opportunity, or something a, like a, that. A, a new bow. If I, like, here's the thing, right? If I am keeping it to myself that I, who I'm sleeping with and who I'm dating, how is that different than keeping it to myself where I work? That's a great question. I can't. I can't answer it either. Because I, you know, you and I, there have been times where, this is something that's so funny. People think because we're best friends, we know everything in real time. Right. But us being so right. secretive or private right. actually translates to us as <laughs> friends. Because there have been times where I'll be talking to you and find out about a whole relationship you had that I didn't know anything right. about. Right. A whole country you went to and came back. I didn't know anything about. I'm right. like, where are you? Right. Hopping to who now? Right. Like, so it's crazy <laughs> because even with each other, we are still, and we're not secretive with each other. It's just that there's a delay between something happening and us feeling the need to like share it and like unpack it. Well, but even even in our friendship, sometimes right. I feel like, well, is this useful? Is this? No, there have been times where you haven't told me stuff where I've been livid and made requests. But uh, <laughs> yes, I've made strong but I'm like, requests. I'm but, like, Antonio, why would you keep a secret from me? But I just didn't see. I didn't care. I didn't. But there, I usually have this sort of okay. Is this useful? Is this funny? Does this advance you know but a conversation still, but, but, or but asking me what i ate today doesn't advance anything it's still part of like being part of someone's everyday life though and so i think when you think you're part of someone's everyday life and you find out they have a whole job or a baby <laughs> or something that you don't know about right. you're like mm. <laughs> right so yeah i'm calling this out i think on these shows people think that we're going to be humanizing other topics but i'm humanizing us right i think mm -hmm. as we're getting older now we're realizing that we're having to renegotiate how private we are. Because the older you are, the more you want to have a village and the more you want to have intimate relationships. I don't think, well, yeah, on that point, yeah. for sure. 
but I don't. I think the reason this conversation is relevant now is because now we're living in a time where, where everybody sharing. is sharing everything. Way too much. And I think I don't think that'll ever be. No, I do not want you to be overshared because then I have to get a new best friend, right? So that would be inconvenient. But what I am thinking though is, are we not? a little bit closer to the other extreme though. Because you remember how I used to always say extremes are mirrors. And mm -hmm. so I think on one end of the world are the super addicted to social media oversharers. Mm -hmm. I think on the other end of the world are us mm -hmm. not telling anybody what we're doing when we leave the house. Right. And then somewhere in the middle is everybody else and somewhere a little bit healthy. So it's like, I don't think we're ever going to be an oversharer, but how do we get back to the middle where people aren't nervous about the, are we living a secret life? <laughs> are people nervous? Is that what they are? No, I'm. I'm. I'm, you, I'm very clear that like you and I have no problems. Like we love the fact that what, we giggle sometimes when we find out something new about each other. Like how come you didn't tell me about that thing that happened in 2015? You're like, oh, I must have forgot. Mm -hmm. So we mm -hmm. think it's funny because we know there's no malice to it, right? Mm -hmm. But as we get into this chapter of our lives where we want to have like. Uh, longer term relationships and healthier relationships right. and we think about all the things that we quietly talk ourselves out of telling our partners mm -hmm. that comes from that muscle that we built keeping everything to ourselves to begin with mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. if I want to have deeper yes. more intimate relationships in my love life and with my friendships with my colleagues I'm gonna have to confront those times where of course I would rather not share because I don't want to but that maybe this is a, a missed opportunity to feel a connection with someone you know what I mean um, and so I have a question because you know I love me a good question. What is your biggest TMI pet peeve about people on social media from the other extreme or less? Those people who share way too much. What what about it annoys you? I know what annoys me about those people. It it makes me sad for me. It, you, it's almost like somebody's putting their insecurities on display but they don't realize the emperor has no clothes. Like I can think a lot of times when people overshare on social media, they think they're creating a persona, but we can all see behind the mask and so it's just awkward. Mm -hmm. Like, ooh, like. There's a lot of awkward, there's a lot of awkward stuff. Cause you can you see, you, because we all know what it's, we all know it takes a hundred selfies to get the one that you like. Right, so right, you, right. So when you post a selfie every day, right. we're all painfully right. aware right. of how much time you're spending. I think, you know, I think a pet peeve of mine, um, when you have some long essay and you just post a fucking picture and oh, just a go, thirst trap? Yeah, or not even a thirst trap, just right. something. There are things that will come up on the explore page and it'll have a long essay. You know, right. I, I forgot this oh I forgot this photo in the archives and I remember this day because it was such and such and such and such and such and such. Right. And I feel like you posted it because it's a nice picture and you just want to post a picture and get the validation. And that's okay. Right. There's nothing wrong with that. But are we judging? What if they really want to it share It is that? judgmental. And I feel like... And, and that's... so it breeds judgment. I think a lot of times when people share too much information, like in my story, for six months, these women only knew what it felt good to me to share and what it felt organic to share. Mm -hmm. And we had a great friendship that I really thought was becoming a family mm -hmm. because I was using my discernment and I was allowed to engage in the way that I felt comfortable. Mm -hmm. The minute they pushed me to share more than I felt comfortable, it created a space where they were empowered to judge me. Mm -hmm. And so I think when you're on social media doing that, you're creating like a much bigger version of that where because you're sharing so much, you almost can't get mad when they judge you because you've invited the attention. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, yeah, it makes us judgy. Mm -hmm. yes. I try so hard social not media, to be judgy, but it's hard not to on social media. But social media is just a judgy platform. It really is. That's all. I mean... So could it's... you date an oversharer? No. Without a doubt. Wait, no. No, no absolutely What not. if you met the most perfect person on the planet and their only problem was that they loved their Couldn't daily... Oh. Couldn't do it. Why? It perfect just go, it, go, it just goes so far against who I am at my core. What are you comfortable like, with being shared in a relationship on social media? Like, what's your line of anything more than this we have to break up? You can't share our sex tape. I'm just kidding. What? No, 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 I'm joking. I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> and the funny thing no, is, but... if you had a sex tape, this would be exactly right. what I would find out. No, but, um, uh, I don't know what the line is. I mean, it's one of those... Would you ever be Instagram official? Would you ever be like, yeah. hey guys, this is my relationship? You would do that? Yeah. Oh, wow. So you and I have never, mm -mm. and that's, I think we're the only people in our age group. Like, think about anybody who makes it into their 30s without ever, like, sharing their, like, yeah, we've never done that. Right. And so to the point where people will tell me it's weird 
that I've never done that. I'm like, well, Antonio's never done it either. Like, we're not, hey, guys, I'm in a relationship. It's like, unless I'm like, oh, this is pre-marriage. Mm -hmm. You might need to meet my fiance because they'll be around for a while. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't judge those who do it. I actually find a lot of inspiration in like black love posts. So I don't judge people who do that stuff, but I don't feel the need whatsoever to be that person. Mm -hmm. If you see me with my partners, because we're so stable and they're going to be around for a while, that it now makes sense for them to be on front street. And even then it, it has to make sense. So I'm not compelled um, to do it. You said that you could never date an overshare. Right. In fact, you barely let me finish the sentence and you were like, no, right. absolutely not. Right. What do you think is the the biggest reason why it instinctively turns you off? Because you know, mentally, if it was just like a mental block, you could work around it. But I can tell it's a gut thing for you. Like, mm -hmm. what about oversharers? Is it that turns you off so bad? Uh, I think relationships are sacred. A relationship should be a sacred space. Mm -hmm. And if you are someone who wants to just share everything with the world, then what what is the line between What's, what? Yeah. What is worthy of being shared versus what is sacred? And also, too, there's a, even that statistic, like, I think, like, seven out of ten couples that go on reality shows and they're breaking up. Of like, course. All the public scrutiny and people in your business immediately creates the space where it's, it doesn't need to feel safe anymore. All, all of a sudden, everybody else's opinions matter more than what's going and on. And even if you don't think they matter, they still start to get heavy on you. Of course, yeah. So could you date a thirst trap then? It's not an overshare. No. In the, you couldn't date a thirst trap? Why? Mm -hmm. uh, same reason. <laughs> I want to see everybody, that shit. Everybody, <laughs> right. If everybody, if everybody else can see your stuff. So do you think keeping secrets can be sexy? Is there a scenario where a secret feels like a sexy thing, like a good thing? Because we're talking about connotations and how the connotation is not neutral. It's always negative. Is there a time where a secretive being, can be positive? Uh, I think sometimes being secretive is necessary, you know, if, if so? you're talking, if, if, if you're talking about, there might not be some cheating type stuff. No, talking but about if, you're, the if you're talking about in, in the social media space or in general, in general, in general, some things people share and they're proud of, they shouldn't be shared. Right. And so when you don't, I have a thing, my grandmother told me this when I was young and she said, Papa, <laughs> if you know, you don't, if you, if someone tells you a secret and you tell someone else mm -hmm. that is no longer a secret no it isn't and i feel like but she told me that when i was very young mm -hmm. i mean like church sunday school Who are you doing that six or seven conversation with i mean you. you know that's my grandmother always trying to spread yeah. wisdom but i feel like learning that lesson at such a young age and then seeing when i didn't follow that i mean when i would you know you remember when we were young kids and <laughs> You're messy. but you know what i mean but yeah. like what that actually nets you when you don't honor those codes right it doesn't do anybody any good and so and also I, when it happens to you you can't even be mad because you were already living that life exactly well. and so to go against something that is so fundamental to who i am mm -hmm. i f it, it's almost like you're asking me to negotiate on something that's a non so there's yeah, no, no you, negotiation you kept secrets for me 20 years in it's so i it's fine. It's fine. I'm not gonna tell you what happened. I gave my word, Beto. I'm like, God damn it. I mean, and but no, that's, that's the thing. Beautiful. You that's know, beautiful. I, I, I feel like, yes. yes. If someone asks me to keep something to myself, yes, I agree. However, yes. the, my uh -huh. only pushback, <laughs> yeah, right, uh -huh. is that when you tell yep. a married man a secret, you almost account for his wife be the sales tax. Yeah, in that in that scenario. Yes, and yeah. so I think sometimes people assume that because we're twenty plus years in, they're like, oh, "I told Antonio you probably so blue," and I'll be like, "No, I really don't know what you're talking about," and mm, they'll th okay. they, because they expect that same tax of like because I've been around since the beginning of time in your life. They're like, "Well, blue must know." I'm like, "I don't know either." Um, I think for me, the only time I think secrets are super sexy is when you're building something epic. Um, two times when you're building something epic behind okay. people's backs, yes. like Ala Jay Z and Beyonce. I think the way that they do shit is so sexy. That's amazing. The fact that, that they is... had uh, Lemonade, they actually had 444 planned before Lemonade. Wow. People think that 444 was a reaction. Nothing that Jay-Z and Beyonce do is a reaction. Right. Everything is a, is, right. a, is a plan. Right. So the fact that we were all writing these memes like, ooh, Hove heard melanade, I mean, Lemonade, and now he got sleep on the couch. No, Hove was in the room when she came up with the idea. Like, right. they literally came up with these this two-story narrative together right. and so in our minds it's men versus women but the whole time they're unified to me that's sexy that's, yeah and the only other kind of sexy that i find secrets is when you're trying to plan me a surprise party no one has ever planned me a surprise party i have been waiting 30 plus years 
Somebody plan me a surprise something. That's fine. You're part of the nobody. That's fine. That's fine. I have planned lots of surprises for people. <laughs> Love y'all. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> it's like, it's like yeah, she's right. Yeah. So those are the only two scenarios. Mm-hmm. Is when you're building an empire and you're minding your business. Right. Or when someone's planning you a, I agree. a surprise party. I agree. At some point. But you know, but there's a lesson there, right? right. I mean, Beyonce's her self titled album where she had, you know, December thirteenth. You know, dropped a whole album, whole visuals. I mean, the there's fact something. That you remember, you remember course. the exact day I, I that remember, Beyonce I remember dropped exactly the album. What, that was that was the day I became a Beyonce fan. The caliber of work, the quality wow. of work, the the volume of work. Are you and part to of keep, the Bayhive? Of course I am. <gasps> you were Bayhive. See, this is look at secrets. But to keep, My best friend at 22 years. Okay. This is how I found out he's part of the Bayhive. But That's fine. To keep that amount. Of information oh, yeah. in this day and age where nobody shared anything right that i think is is admirable and it's what amazing. and what we should all strive for like that level of yeah of privacy it's also self-mastery right there's yeah. something about one thing i will say i think that there are and i'm gonna talk about extremes we tend to talk about things in extremes and they ignore the middle mm-hmm. there are people in this world who think that i am a part of a marginalized group and therefore, I need a voice. And if I want to share my private experiences, it's because I am trying to normalize a version of life that hasn't been normalized. We understand that, right? However, even with that noble intent, sometimes you're just showing off and because you become addicted to the constant affirmation. Mm-hmm. And so I think a lot of people are being visible because presentation representation matters and presentation matters. And they want to be represented. Right. And they start for that great reason. But like 100K followers into it, where they're addicted to getting you know 50,000 likes every day, let's be honest, it's called a thing a thing. Mm-hmm. You're not just doing it because you want to normalize or humanize um, a, a group of people. You're a little addicted to the internet. Mm-hmm. And I think it's really hard when you see social justice warriors or activists who've been bitten by the bug, but because their cause is so noble, it's prickly pointing that out right because it's like how do you tell the the man that he's not a myth right you know what i mean like how do you tell the person who's known as this big name in in in, in our sphere that they're also still a regular basic person who right. likes getting likes a lot you know right. what i mean right. and so I, i'm hoping that these kind of conversations around privacy will not just allow people like you and i to figure out how to be more um open um even though we still want to stay discerning but also for those of you who have glorified sharing and oversharing be willing to say that even though I have the best of intentions, sometimes I'm full of shit too. Yeah, yeah. Because part of be- being humanized is admitting when you're full of shit. Right. And the gag is we're all full of shit at some point. All of us, yeah. And even with the, the whole privacy thing, I had to call myself out. I was like, if you could call out, because we can talk about why we think people overshare. We think they're insecure, right? A lot of people think you're oversharing because you're insecure. Right. Let, let's call a spade a spade. So a lot of times when we talk about oversharing, even the word over is a judgment, right? And we're arguably undersharers where it's like, I started sharing things because I'm on. I'm here for the food with Melissa, and I love the podcast. But a couple of people were like, "Blue, did you make all this up? Because I've known you. I've never heard known any of this." And it took me watching people who knew me but who didn't know me. The things I don't know. Right. I, I'm listening. I'm like, okay, I didn't right. know that. But and, 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 and you're my best friend, right? right? Like it makes me realize, like, yo, even though my intention was never to be secretive or sneaky in that kind of sinister way, that girl who was overzealous mm-hmm. who, who hit me up and she said. I feel like you're sneaky or it feels icky that I don't know stuff about you even though we're sharing space all the time. I can now in retrospect see that even though I wasn't being sneaky, I can see why to her, my slipperiness might have felt that way to her. Mm -hmm. I think people want to know that they have an impact on your life. How can they have an impact if they don't know what's going on? Right, yes. And that's something that I think we're trying to navigate. Right. Um, Why do you think people undershare? Because if we think insecurity is why people overshare, why do you think people undershare? Could we arguably say that undersharers are a little insecure as well? Yeah, I think we all are. But where we fall on the spectrum right. determines how we react to that, right? So for me, I don't want to just share stuff and share things that I deem sacred and throw it out to and the world. And then have y'all fuck it up for me. But you know what I mean? Don't fuck and this so, up right. for me. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, um, I, I think we all sort of have the same 
things fears going on, the same fears, very differently. you know, and some people are afraid of what the public will say. Some people crave what the public will say, but that's, it's all about the public and it's all, and, but it's also about what our experiences were that led us to those places. You know what my favorite post I don't think I undershare, by the way. Okay. Uh, we I just, don't think so. We you disagree. Know? <laughs> I think you're a massive undersharer. <laughs> and I think that there have been some amazing... Damn. You're a massive undershare. I love you so much. But there's been some amazing moments in your life that you didn't um, pay homage to because you it's not built into the way that you think yet. This is true. And those are moments that I think if we looked at them back, they were missed opportunities for us to reminisce on things. And so you're right. yeah, I, you're I right. do think you're a massive undershare. It's like an intervention. Come to humanize. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> it's an intervention. No, and I, and I think that... Now that I've started sharing more, mm -hmm. it's made me realize that I was a massive undersharer for a very long time because hmm. there's no reason why somebody should be in your life for five years and didn't know that you were engaged or didn't know that you lived here or there. The, like, there's so many things that I've done. Like, I have a former friend who I don't no longer speak to, and it's crazy because she and I were so close for 10 years. I know for a fact that when she watches my podcast, she's hearing things for the first time. Mm -hmm. And I can imagine... I'm hearing things for the first time. Exactly. Yeah. And I'm like, that's not necessarily healthy, Right. Like, right. it's healthy if um, I'm just fine without it. But now that I'm hearing that you guys have never heard about it, I'm finding all these moments in those times where I needed y'all and didn't realize it because I wasn't sharing. Mm -hmm. And had I shared, Same. I, I you would have been able to help me more. I can say that I've had those moments as well. Yeah, you can't lie because I'm your no, friend. No, 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 like, no. I can, but, but, I can think of some examples. But I, I can think of a lot of times where... We suffered in silence. But, I mean, and suffered yeah. in silence. And... Um, I think that's also at the core of people oversharing. Sometimes people just want, you know, a word of kindness. Right. Sometimes people say, I'm going through this thing. Please just say something nice to me. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you see it. You know, I saw someone that's say true. yesterday, uh, you know, someone was murdered and my family sent me a kind word. I mean, I think. Oh, but that, yeah, that's, that's all. Beautiful. But we're sharing things. Pub Social media is public. It's a channel. Right. It's, it's literally just something that's broadcast to the world. Mm -hmm. Everybody's putting something out for some reason. Um, I think we're all there for the same sort of, not the same reasons, we're, but we're all there to we're connect, all, right? We're the all there to connect. That's here's exactly. Here's the thing, though, right? For me, connection is something that I love. What I don't love is um, the direction, right? Because mm -hmm. you're you're either internally focused towards yourself or externally focused. Right. I have a rule for myself. Two rules, actually. Number one, I would never post anything on social media that I wouldn't proudly say to a judge's face. Unfortunately, for most judges, I'm, I'm proud of a lot of things. <laughs> so, but there's literally nothing that I've ever written on the internet that I would not repeat in court. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing. If you ever see me being froggy on the internet, I would say the same thing to a judge. Mm -hmm. So don't think you're going to shame me. Because mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. already thinking, right. if the judge asked me, would I say it? Hell yeah, Your Honor, you heard what the hell I said? So that's the first rule. And the second rule is that like, I only share things that I think makes sense, that I would feel good about. Right. So if something looks good externally, but I can't figure out a reason how it feeds me. I don't post it mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, because I don't mm -hmm. want to get into the habit of only feeding y'all. Right. And so that has made me very discreet because there's some things that I would share where it would just be for likes. Mm -hmm. I'm like, but what am I getting from this aside from just likes? Right. And if I can't answer that question, I pull it back in. Right. It's like a sugar rush. Yeah. Like it's I don't like want to get addicted to it. Taking a, it's a bowl of sugar and. Okay, is this what's going to be my breakfast for the right. day? You know what I mean? I have a question, though. Antonio. If I was ever on a reality show uh -huh. and I needed to have my tribe around me, yeah. would you come on as my friend? Yeah. What? The, the massive yeah. undershare would be on a reality show? Would you be wearing, would you be wearing disguises the whole time? Probably. Like, is that Antonio Height? Probably, yeah. No, no I'm just kidding. But we're, no. we're living in that world where you realize that we have several friends that have been on reality shows. We know people who've been on reality shows. Mm -hmm. And so it's almost impossible, especially in L.A., now that we're in L.A., so like, by the way, how amazing is it that we start off as two kids in homeroom, Toulouse and Thompson in Boston, Massachusetts. I know. And then I moved to New York, and you moved to Atlanta, and then you left. Which Atlanta. N uh, that's a whole chapter. A lot of people don't know you live in Atlanta. <laughs> of my life. Then. A lot of people don't know you live. And the funny thing is, those years that you were in Atlanta were the two years that I kept on getting engaged. I mean, no, the, the four years that I kept on getting engaged. Like, <laughs> and I realized maybe it's because I missed you. I that's was like, crazy. I was like, if my best friend's gone, maybe I should get a husband. That's. So you were you you ran off to Atlanta and I just kept getting engaged. Yeah. Like, think about how weird. We never talk about this publicly. People be like, "What happened now?" Mm, mm, That's mm, not mm. normal. Like, there's all this richness of experience that we have that people don't think we have. 
Um, but no, I think it's amazing how much we've evolved over the years. And I think us learning how to be more open, because I think the internet can teach us how to be a little bit more expressive. This is true. And we can hopefully teach some of them how to be... Not, pull back a little. Pull back. Just a little. And not everything you think is a gem. Right. A lot of people, Blue's pro tip for today, not everything you think is a gem. Please don't believe everything you think. We lie to ourselves as much as we lie to others. Um, speaking of, I know that bars. Um, I, I have a question. People create myths around you when you don't tell them who you are. Uh -huh. Because I am so private, secretive. I'll take all those words. They're all true, right? People tend to create a story for me, whether it's true or not, because I'm so private. And I'm at the point now when I, where I get close to folks, I'm always like, you thought that about me? They're like, yes, because I didn't know you, so it just I made an assumption. What's a huge assumption or misconception that people have on you based on the fact that you're so, you have so much discernment? I can think of a couple, but let's see what you come up with. What's a big misconception about you? Uh, that I'm aloof. Sometimes that I'm aloof, that I'm distant, <laughs> that, I'm <laughs> that I'm judgmental. Um, yeah, people think you're not just mental at all, but people do think you're just mental because you're so quiet. Um, yeah, you, it usually skews negative. Yeah, it, I, you know, he thinks but, he's better than us. Yeah, and it's <laughs> like I'm honestly just thinking about what I'm gonna the, eat for dinner. You and, really are. You, you know, love food. Literally, people think you're so much deeper than you are when you are aloof in their minds. Like it could be something mm. like you're having a chill, shallow thought, but because you're looking out the window, look at that motherfucker. He's so deep. Like if. I sometimes think people who aren't deep are intentionally aloof so they can come off mysterious. Mm. I have a theory about that. Mm. Um, what do you think is your... Next time on episode <laughs> three. What do you think is the biggest misconception about me? Um, that... And I'm going to do the same thing in the other direction. Too. I think biggest misconception about you... I'm nervous! Oh my God, I'm so nervous. Um, biggest misconception about me? I would say... Uh, I think people think that you share a lot. They do. Um... So the biggest misconception is I'm an open book when I'm really not. Right. I don't think you're. I don't think you're shut off though. No, no, no. You know, but I think the perception is, you know, she shares a lot. Yeah, and it's always funny. Um, I'm so used to people thinking that I'm a sharer when I'm not. I think I take pride in that, like feeling like I'm an open book even when the book is like in the under the bed. And so I one time was hanging out with this girl and she was like, "You talk a lot about stuff." But you don't actually tell a lot about what's going on with you. And I was like, excuse me? She was like, all your stories are in the past tense. She's like, you don't currently talk about stuff that you're going on. And I was like, damn, she's on to me. Like, it, it, I felt so exposed mm. because if you think about all the stories that I share, there are always things that I'm very distantly removed from. Mm -hmm. And things that are currently happening, you probably won't hear a story about publicly for like another two years. Mm -hmm. And so I do have a delay where, because I'm sharing about things that are old, but provocative. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. People think I'm an oversharer, and then whole last time, the last two years of my life, you don't know anything about, and you won't until the book comes out. Like, right. it's I find comfort in looking like an oversharer when I'm not, because right. then nobody thinks to like pull back the curtain. Right, right. Don't start now, guys. I'm still not gonna be sharing things in real time. Learn that from Beyonce and Jay Z. Jay Z and Beyonce always tell us everything, eventually. This is true. So I'm gonna be like, I, I like their, I like, I, I love how they do their stuff. They're they're not the dope. perfect couple, but I love how they keep us always guessing and make us so insecure about what we guess that we just like, you know, let's just wait for them to tell us. Mm -hmm. I want people to feel like that about my relationships. Mm -hmm. Because misconception about you, I would say, is um, that you're much more serious than you are. Oh, okay. And that you're quiet. So the funny thing about me and you is we're we're like a black and white cookie. Everybody thinks I'm loud in public because I am loud in public, but at home, I hate talking and I hate noise. Antonio, when we go out, is very, very like, hi, everybody, and chill. When we come home, he will not shut up. <laughs> like, we're in my apartment, right? Like, literally. It's taking everything in me right now to, him sit him to sit still, still and not. So for all those people who thought that, well, how does quiet, chill Antonio get along with Blue, who's rah, 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 you can ask our producer, say hi, Dom, from the back. The whole time in between takes, I'm like, Antonio, can you just give me five minutes of quiet? Five minutes? I, I just need quiet. And he's screaming and running and dancing and, and eating clementines and such. Like, we're the complete opposite That's behind true. closed doors. Yin and yang. Look at that. Oh, I know, even our opposite, we're Look yin and that. yang. So everything that you think about me, it's probably more true about Antonio. And everything you think about Antonio is probably more true about me. I mean, I guess when you are in someone's life for so long, 
it's almost like your reflections of each other. Mm -hmm. um, what's something about you that people would be surprised to know? Uh, something that people would be surprised to know. Uh, I am a huge Sierra stan. What is that? Okay, I'm not jealous, but Antonio's love of Sierra is a little ridiculous. I love Sierra. In fact, we're going to attack Sierra on this. <laughs> Sierra, I honestly think, aside from your father, your son, and Russell Wilson, like, I think nobody else loves you more than Antonio. You're fourth. You are, you are the fourth person who loves Sierra the most in this world. The fourth, um, the fourth man I, I who think loves that's, Sierra the most. That's probably... That's probably it's her it's husband, so. her daddy, her baby, and then you. But what about you, though? Um, Something that people would be surprised yes. to know about me. That I get shy. Oh, yeah. When I like someone... Yeah, without a doubt. Um, I get very, very shy. And I'll tease them. And I'll bring them gifts. Like It's like a puppy dog. Uh -huh. like, like, I'll play with them. And I'll, and I'll bring them gifts. But, and then I'll, I'll lie, like, just lay around next to them. And just stare at them. And then wait for them to say something. So I think a lot of people... Yeah, I'm very shy, mm -hmm. which is crazy. Very shy, actually. Because my it whole, actually, you know, it's it, actually it's weird how it's, shy I am. Yeah, it, it, it in in the grand scheme of like everything that you do, how opinionated you are, how you right. get paid to share your opinion. It's literally my job. Yeah. It's the oddest, the oddest thing. And you wouldn't know that unless you saw me in a relationship. That's not why mm -hmm. I always say mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you don't know someone until you've seen them in a relationship, or you've seen them in love, or you've seen them dating, because. People who've never seen me in a relationship, there's literally a complete second version of me mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that That's only true. comes out in relationships. Yeah. So the fact that I'm shy, the fact that I hate yelling when I'm in a relationship, um, I'm I'm I, I'm the beta. I'm not the alpha at all. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I'm not judgy. I actually don't have super strong opinions. I'm more like, hey, what works better for the the relationship? Like I'm mm -hmm. I'm so the opposite. Right. And I and, and it's funny because somebody once asked me which one's the real you. And I was like, they're both the real me. Oh, I can't. There's alpha blue in public, but behind closed doors, there's like, you know, housewife blue who doesn't like yelling. Holding house. up your peach. <laughs> right, I could be right. Like, Yeah, no, and, and I think that's another reason too why I'm so secretive and private is because the version of me that you guys see behind closed doors is so much more sensitive and, and quiet and tame that she doesn't have the machete that the public version of me has. Public me wants to smoke. Mm-hmm. Private me opens a window when there's smoke. It's a, it's two very different versions. Mm -hmm. And that softer, pinker side of me, she is tired. Is not going to be able to fight you off the way this version of me is. So, yeah. And you're actually a lot tougher. By, people think that you're probably a lot more timid than you are, too, because you're so aloof. And, and <laughs> I've seen you mad. Mm -hmm. I'm one of four people in the world who has seen Antonio mad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it's scary. That's funny. <laughs> when you get mad... It's like seeing Santa like unravel. Mm -hmm. It is it is jarring. <laughs> it is jarring and scary. That's and funny. Dark. But no, but I think it's beautiful though because they always what's that saying that I love? Um, the only way you can call yourself peaceful mm -hmm. is if you first admit that you are capable of great harm. Without doubt. Because if you're yeah. not capable of great harm, you're not peaceful, you're just right. harmless. Right. There's a difference. Right, right. And you're a very peaceful person. You better come with that wisdom. Bars, you're a very peaceful person. Um, I am a spicy peaceful person. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not violent at all. You know, I just talk that shit, though. But um, no, we're peaceful people because we know we're not harmless. We choose peace. And that's the, I think, I think, I, I think that's um, kind of what I would probably want the messaging of this episode to be mm -hmm. is that like if you are sharing or not sharing either either extreme ask yourself why is that really the case because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you're not sharing because you're scared and because you and then you're judging somebody who is oversharing because they're scared the irony is you, you we're judging each other we're judging ourselves for, the, for feeling the exact same thing feeling the exact same thing and just showing it in different ways um, on a scale of one to ten, how likely are you to share a little bit more after we had this conversation? Ten. Really? Yeah. You're gonna share more? Yeah, of course. Why oh, I'm not? so proud of you. What? <laughs> oh, I love you. I um. You're my bestest friend. Oh. Um, I love you. Okay. I love you too. We're, we're being we're being too soft and pink and boring. C continue. Um, soft and pink. Soft and pink. Like, stop being nice to my pillows. There we go. Okay, ladies, here's the thing about having men in your house. They beat up your pillows. Imagine this pillow's a baby. <sighs> You're on the teal couch. Uh, you've inspired me, I have to say. 
How have I inspired you? To share. Oh, we didn't we didn't rehearse this, by the way. This is real. What? Oh, no. Getting, I mean this, this is live. Are you having an epiphany? We didn't really rehearse anything, though. I know we didn't really yeah. did it. So um, you really are going to share more. Yeah. You realize that I've been arguing with you for years to share more, and it took us doing the TV show. Sorry, the YouTube series. Although YouTube is TV these days. It YouTube, took us do- you watch YouTube on your TV. I do TV. watch YouTube on my TV, but it took us doing the series for you to finally listen and share more. Uh, Yeah, I think so. Oh, I love that. I think so. I feel like, um, plus we're at a time now where connection is important. Very important. Everything feels, everybody's always at odds. But that's the other thing is what, where in the conversation do we fit? Everybody is always, 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 always fighting. Right. And so I think part of it is if you've got good shit to share, then why not? Make sense? I'm going to hold you to that. You better hold look, me to look that. Look at this. This show's already changing the lives of people that I love. Um, Antonio, it looks like our time is actually up. I know it went by really, really quickly. You're going to have to come back. I'm doing a very special um, episode that I told you about, remember? The yes. The big group one? Yes. Yeah, we're doing a very special episode. Can I wear the thing that I'm just kidding? Yeah, I'm but we're wearing a very <laughs> special episode, and I, I intentionally want you and Obi and a couple other people that we're cool with to be a part of. It's going to be really exciting. You guys, thank you so much for watching this episode of Human Eyes. I hope that we've inspired you to either show more discernment and keep more things sacred or open up like Antonio has vowed to, you vowed, uh-huh. and and be more uh, expressive with what's going on because and you're robbing the world of all the awesome shit that you have to say. <laughs> love you. I love you too. All right, bye guys.